Hey there, Gemini. Welcome to your reading for March. March? No, May. For May. March? Good Lord. Anyway, welcome to your reading for May 2019. Thank you so much for tuning in. This is going to be a general reading. Yes. So please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. If you would like to look into your own personal situation, go ahead and email me. My information is in the description box below. Just go ahead and email me and I'll get you all set up. Yeah. So we've got your messages for May 2019. So I'm doing things a little bit differently. Once again, um, I am in, I'm going back to my original model of starting with the messages first and then getting your Oracle guidance after. But the wrench in the system is that I am using something different other than the unicorn Oracle this time. I am going to be using the Crystal Mandala deck to get you guys some extra charged guidance. Yeah? Okay. Um, I want to wish a happy birthday to my May Geminis. Yeah, those of you that are born in May, um, a very happy birthday to you. We are in Taurus season right now, but you guys are up next. So, woohoo! Yes? All right, Gemini, let's get started. Hi, spirit. Please make me a clear channel for all Geminis, sun, moon, rising, and Venus. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for May 2019. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, Gemini. Um, so as I was connecting with your energy before, um, something just felt very serious. And I don't want to say it's like, and I mean, for some of you, it could be like a really like a super serious energy. But for others, it's just like, I guess, very down to earth or grounded about some sort of situation. And as I was going through the pre-shuffle, a few cards popped out. The first was the Four of Swords, okay? So I do feel like there is a bit of a rest that's needed. Maybe you've just been working really hard or just going hard for some time and you need to like take some time to rest. There was also a message in getting some sort of new perspective. You also had the Queen of Wands and the Ace of Wands. You could be dealing with an Aries. You also could be dealing, uh, you could have fire in your chart or maybe another... A uh, fire sign, Aries Leo Sagittarius, um, but also the Queen of Wands is a cardinal energy, okay? So she takes action. Well, no, that's not true. She's a cardinal energy, so she does, she's not afraid to go after what she wants, but it's a, she also, as a feminine energy, she's magnetic. She allows things to come to her. She's very attractive. Um, and with the Ace of Wands here, I feel like you guys have been trying to manifest something. Um, you're taking it pretty seriously, but it's not like you're... I don't know. I don't feel like you're a stick in the mud about it. It's just you're focused really, you're very intently focused and you might need to just take a, a bit of a rest, a break, okay? All right, Gemini. So I'm going to give this three shuffles here and we'll see what we've got for your month. Two for my Geminis. There it is. And three for my Geminis. Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus, May 2019. Boop. All right. Overall energy, Gemini, we've got judgment. Okay. Um, so it could be an ascension process that you're going through, some sort of awakening here, a resurrection, some sort of second chance maybe. Ah, the chariot. Could be dealing with a Cancerian. You could have cancer in your chart. The Knight of Wands. And finally, the Three of Wands. So yes, um, trailblazing. Uh, it's funny because Taurus got that. I just did their reading. Um, but I, you see, I do feel like you're very fired up. You're, you're, you're fired up about something. You've got some strong inspiration. And that Four of Swords came out before because you're needing to like maybe kind of like temper the fire a little bit, maybe take a little bit of a break, um, try and not let yourself burn out. Take a rest, take a break, uh, focus on meditation. Um, really, that will really, really help you. That'll help you keep things in balance here. Now I do feel, with the chariot card 
and the Three of Wands and also Judgment, but between the Chariot and the Three of Wands here, I feel like you guys are absolutely on the right path and you're aware of that. You're very much aware of that. And so that's kind of why you may have this um, this feisty, maybe a little bit overzealous, a little bit of a hasty energy about you right now with this uh, Knight of Wands. Um, but also the Knight of Wands energy to me is a light worker card. If this really feels like, especially with this judgment energy here, this feels like an activation, okay? This feels like an awakening. This feels like you've either you're starting to get woke congratulations welcome or your your awakening is deepening okay and so you're gaining some sort of inspiration to get to get yourself moving in a particular direction all right so let's get into the rest of your energies here you can either look at this as the first half of your month or the second half of your month or you could just like let it all flow okay time is an illusion and energy is fluid so Take it as it resonates, yeah? First set of surrounding energies for you, Gemini. You've got the five of pentacles. Okay, so the immediately, the first thing that I'm hearing or feeling from this card is that whatever sort, some sort of destitution, feeling left out in the cold, feeling lack or whatnot, it's inspiring you to get this moving. It's like, especially with judgment that's in your overall energy, I feel like there was... Um, maybe some of you may have hit rock, rock bottom or some sort of situation that you may have felt like was rock bottom. Um, and I'm saying that specifically because for some of you particularly, y'all don't even really know what rock bottom is. I'm not, I'm not, that's not um, judgment in no way, shape or form is that me passing judgment on you. It's just that you never may never have really experienced something like this or a low like this. And so you're kind of like getting <laughs> your feet wet. I guess I don't know. It doesn't even matter. But um, there could some of you may actually be coming out of a dark night of the soul situation that's helping influence some sort of change in your life. The Five of Pentacles is coupled with yep, rock bottom, the Ten of Swords. Yep, 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 Gemini. Uh, this could have this could be financial. You may have lost a job. You may have gotten laid off. Um, you may have lost a relationship. Uh, maybe some friendships. Um, it's almost as if your life has been turned upside down for the better and for the benefit of all, even the people around you that were experiencing the situation alongside you or watching you go through the situation, they all benefited from it. But now you're coming out much stronger, very much maybe you could say like a Phoenix from the Ashes Risen type of situation, okay? Second set of surrounding energies for you, Gemini, you've got the Eight of Pentacles. Excellent, because I see in this that you're actually doing your work to pick yourself up out of the depths. Now, for some of you, you could be drowning yourself in work, trying to avoid what you're dealing with, what you're experiencing, what you're going through. I would not recommend that. Yes, you can use you can use work, creativity, a hobby as some sort of outlet to get your energy out there, to process your energy, but make sure that if you're doing that, you're really paying attention to your feelings. You're really processing the situation. You're just not trying to find a way to drown it out, yes? Eight of Pentacles is coupled with justice. Boop. Libra energy. This is beautiful. Um, but I do see, especially the first thing I thought of when I got this eight of pentacles was you're actually really doing the work to pull yourself up out of this situation. So that's beautiful. For some of you, this is, this is, this is work that you have had to do for some time. And this may have been why you may have hit this rock bottom or dark night of the soul because you had been avoiding the situation. It feels very much like a tower energy. Now we don't have the tower yet and we may not get the tower because this kind of feels like the tower, the official instance of the tower happened a while ago or maybe like a month or so ago. And now you're just kind of picking up the pieces at this point. Your current challenge in this energy, or sorry, let me say that again. Your challenge in this first half of the reading here, you have the Two of Swords, Gemini, indecisiveness. For some of you, it's like you're, you're refusing to see the light here, um, or you're refusing to see the situation as it is, as it's meant to be, or you, maybe you just can't see it. But I feel like it's more of a refusal here. There are some, and I really feel like there are some things you may really have to own up to in order to see this as clearly as possible. And there's resistance to that. Two of Swords is coupled with, oof, yeah, the Three of Swords. There definitely is some resistance to that. Now, this is heartbreaking, okay? For some of you, it's heartbreaking in the sense that you're kind of waking up 
to the nature of the reality around you. Judgment, okay? This is absolutely a big old wake up call. Like get your ass up, that kind of a situation. And so what you're going to be becoming aware of is entirely possible that it's very, very heartbreaking life shattering, okay? Like I said, for some of you, your world is being turned upside down. For others of you, you might have to break somebody's heart. Um, but that's life. You know, if you're not happy in a situation, if it doesn't work for you, you're only doing a disservice, not only to yourself, but to the other person, okay? Okay, your closing message or potential outcome in the first half of your reading here, you've got the Knight of Cups though. This is a good thing, okay? I'm definitely seeing some sort of reconciliation maybe um, coming from a place of being, being heart-centered. That's the biggest thing that I'm getting here. Uh, it could be that whatever you're going through that's, that we're talking about here in this first half of the reading is leading you to be more open with your heart, okay? Be a little bit more vulnerable. Um, uh, approach a situation or move forward in a situation from a place of being heart-centered, yes? Knight of Cups is coupled with the Emperor. Wow, Aries energy, you could be dealing with an Aries. Some of you may be getting some sort of offer from a masculine energy, um, but also this is taking life by the horns and saying, this is my rodeo. Taking, taking responsibility for your life, taking your power back, being assertive, being the master of your own domain, but doing it from a heart-centered place. For some of you, there may have been a really humbling experience, Five of Pentacles, there could have been a really humbling experience that now has you really taking your power back and taking ownership of your life, taking responsibility for your life. That's really beautiful, Gemini. Okay. Getting into the second half of your reading here, first set of surrounding energies, you got good old King of Swords. Now, um, that's really seeing things as objective as possible and making the right decisions for whatever it is you're trying to manifest in your life, whatever changes you're trying to make in your life. Uh, seeing the past clearly, seeing all the situations around you clearly, waking up. Also, the King of Swords is absolutely representing some sort of awakening um, coupled especially with Judgment, which was the very first card out of the overall energy for you. Uh, you also could be dealing with an Aquarian or maybe even another air sign. We do have Libra in Justice here, but you could be dealing with a ge another Gemini also, okay? King of Swords is coupled with, ooh, there's that Queen of Wands that I was telling you about that came out during the pre-shuffle, more Aries energy. But this feels like a very good couple. First of all, this is a balance between masculine and feminine energy. The feminine represented perfectly or even beautifully here by the Queen of Wands, who is that beautiful, charismatic, magnetic individual. Whereas the King of Swords, her counterpart in this specific situation, the fuel to her fire, basically, uh, fire and air, like, obviously, oxygen fuels fire, right? So the fuel to her fire. But that fuel to her fire is the situation in which things are seen clearly, are taken from an objective point of view, and anything that is that would be harmful or put that fire out is cut away. They're working in tandem here. There's awaken. There's a big awakening that's happening for a lot of Geminis right now, I guess, or just for the Geminis that I'm channeling for right now. And so having this balance of masculine and feminine energy is really perfect, especially in this way between fire and air, because they do feed, they do feed each other. Well, air feeds fire, right? So I'm, I'm really seeing this King of Swords energy as helping fuel this passion, this drive that you're experiencing, especially with the Knight of Wands that is in the overall energy for you. Second set of surrounding energies, you've got, oh, the Nine of Swords though. There are some similarities between you and Taurus. You might wanna watch the Taurus video. Some of you may have Taurus in your chart. Um, anxiety. What are you anxious about, Gemini? Hmm. Nine of Swords is coupled with Six of Cups, the past.
will so and so ever f- forgive me? Will I w- ever be able to be forgiven? Am can I heal the situations from the past? That's what I'm hearing in in circum- in in, in uh, conjunction with this. And all I have to say about that is yes, absolutely, you can. Okay, use this King of Swords energy to cut away anything that would lead lead you to believe that the past cannot be healed. Even if even if you don't necessarily reconcile in the way that you may want with certain individuals in your life. It doesn't matter. As long as you have reconciled within yourself, you have forgiven yourself, you have forgiven others, or at least you're working towards that. I'm not going to say you have to forgive anybody. But I do know how difficult it is to, to forgive, um, especially when some things you've gone through some really extreme situations. But that forgiveness really is more for you than anyone else, because as long as you are okay within it doesn't matter what's going on in the external, right? Because the external is a reflection of your internal reality. The past is still kind of stressing you out, but don't worry about it. Because ultimately you've reached this level of awakening where it's like now you can really start to put it behind you. All right, Gemini? Excellent. Excellent. Your challenge in the second half of your reading here, you have the five of wands. Chaos, yes, chaos and confusion, but this is from the manifestation process, but also um, differing of opinion, inner turmoil, inner struggle surrounding whatever it is from the past that you are anxious about. But now when I say this is chaos and confusion from the manifestation process, this is like, I mean, the universe at its natural state, the universe has an element to chaos, an element of chaos to it, right? And in order to manifest, to truly manifest as best of your, to the best of your ability, you have to be willing to work or you have to be able to work with that chaos. And the way you do that is by maintaining your alignment to what it is you truly desire and just allowing the universe to work on your behalf, okay? Chaos and confusion, but you're learning about that. That's part of the ascension process. That's part of the awakening process. That's part of learning how to be a co-creator with the universe, okay, Gemini? Five of Wands is coupled with, oh, the Ace of Cups, loving yourself, Gemini. All right, especially in face of this nine of swords, six of cups energy, the the past energies that are causing you stress and anxiety, feeling like you'll never be able to live it down, feeling like you'll never be able to let it go, feeling like you'll never be able to be forgiven. Fuck that. Forgive yourself, first and foremost. That's really all that matters. Everyone else, you have no you have no control over that. So really all you can do is is work to forgive your own self, right? Ace of Cups, loving yourself for who you are, no matter what you've been through. That is a challenge, but it's worth fighting for. Yes? Your closing message or potential outcome here in the second half of your reading, Gemini, you got Seven of Pentacles. Wow, that's so crazy. Um, you might really want to check out the Taurus reading. I don't know why. Um, maybe the Taurus is in a significant place for in your chart right now. Uranus is in Taurus. Um, so maybe this is uh, something specific for you, but Taurus got this very same card in the exact same position, Seven of Pentacles, reaping what you've sown. For Now, for some of you, this does feel a little okay because of what might have gone on in the past, but like whatever, it's a lesson. You learn from it, move on. Take the lesson, take the harvest, plant better seeds in the future. That's literally all it is. That is why we come here, Gemini. That is why we come to Earth, to learn. There is no such thing as right or wrong. There is only experience and perception. Okay? Seven of Pentacles is coupled with the Eight of Wands. This is definitely a learning through the contrast situation. And I do feel like many of you really have gotten the lesson now. Or maybe by the end of the month, you will have gotten the lesson. But this is just like, uh, this really just feels like to me, okay, you saying, okay, universe, I get it. I see what you were trying to show me now. I understand the lesson I was supposed to be learning here. I understand why X, Y, and Z happened or A, B, and C, what not, not, whatever. I understand why so-and-so did this, said this, blah, 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 reacted in this way, blah, blah, blah. I understand why I did this, said this, reacted in this way, blah, 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 what not, whatever. 
And now that you've got the lesson, the universe is like, perfect, let's move forward. <laughs> yeah. And you know, I'm seeing, cause the eight of wands is the main, the minor, in my opinion, is the minor arcana version of the chariot. And you have the chariot in your overall energy. It was second right after the uh, judgment. Okay. This is beautiful, Gemini. Okay. Now let's get into your Oracle guidance here from the crystal mandala deck. For my Geminis, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus, best message, please, Geminis, Geminis. All right, here we go. Best message, please, Spirit, for May 2019, for my Geminis. There it is. Ooh, beautiful. Oh, my God. I rarely get this card. It's card number 27, Ascended Master, St. Germain, and Amethyst, Spiritual Connection. Now, this card immediately makes me think of the Violet Flame. I mean, look at the color. It's beautiful. And Amethyst is absolutely one of my favorite, favorite stones and gems and crystals and whatnot. But, um, and also, St. Germain is the keeper of the Violet Flame. So for those of you that are really going through this awakening, awakening process... If you're either awakening for the first time, you're just waking up, or you're continuing on your own process, the Violet Flame meditation is so powerful and so useful. When I was really going through the biggest part, a, a major part of my, my awakening up until this moment thus far, um, I was doing the Violet Flame meditation regularly to help clear my energy, to clear away any sort of attachments, negative entities, to clear space, to allow, to call back my energy that had been fragmented in all these different places by, in, in experiences and whatnot. So for many of you, the Violet Flame meditation is probably going to be super, super help for, helpful for you at this moment in time. But let's read into this. Card number 27, Spiritual Connection. We bring you the blessing of spiritual connection. There are times on your life path when you will feel alone. If you are working on an issue or going through a challenging time and don't feel particularly supported or that others understand, even though they may love you, then that sense of loneliness may increase for a time. Or perhaps you wonder if you are as spiritually connected as you could be. Perhaps you have been asking for confirmation of your divine connection or for some sort of sign that what you think might be divine guidance is genuine. This oracle comes with a message. You are capable of conscious spiritual connection and that connection is growing in power every time you talk to the universe through prayer or any act of devotion. You are also being asked to release any barriers around your heart and mind so you can allow the unconditionally loving voice of spirit to be heard in your heart and soothe your mind. Also, some of you may want to invest in amethyst because it's really good with opening your crown chakra and your third eye chakra, opening your higher centers and helping you establish a connection with spirit, source, the divine, whatever, in order for you to continue to communicate. All right, Gemini, I hope that was helpful for you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Happy birthday to those Geminis that have their birthdays in the end of May. I look forward to connecting with you again for uh, the next reading for June and Gemini season. Yeah, take care. Bye.